go right into the word of the Lord on tonight. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, Proverbs 18 and verse 21. And then we're going to move over to James chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. And it reads Proverbs 18 and 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Let me read that again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Then when we move over to James chapter three, and write these verses down. Don't just read them on the screen, but read them when we get offline here. James chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. The 10th verse says, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, and that means sisters too, these things ought not to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. My God. And tonight, I just want to talk just for a little bit about the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. As my father used to say, that little red flannel that's in your mouth holds a lot of power. There's a formidable power that dwells in each one of us. This power through the mouth, through the tongue is capable of starting wars. This tongue has made men rich and women famous. And it also has the power to commend, to praise or to corrupt. It has the power to bless or to shame. This power that I'm talking about is the tongue. But one thing about the tongue, God's desire for his people to you is to use their tongues to bring glory to his name and to advance his kingdom on this earth. So that's what God's desire is for us, to use our tongue to bring glory to his name, not for evil, not for corruption, not to play the blame game, not to start wars, but to bring glory to the name of the Lord. But Satan also wants a piece of the action with our tongues. What he tries to do is to keep us in darkness about the power of our words. We are enticed to use our words for harm instead of hope. Mm -hmm. We can use it to talk down to people. We can use our tongue to talk about people. We can use our tongues to intimidate people. But very rarely do we use our tongue to instill hope in people. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 18 and 21 reminds us that our words hold the power of life and death. It reads again, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Now, there's four things that you see in this scripture, this one verse of scripture. Number one, what we see is our words have power. Our words have power. And that power can either speak death or it can speak life. And then the third thing is our words produce fruit. What are your words producing? 
Are your words producing chaos? Are your words producing hurt feelings? Are your words producing hate? But death, you can either speak death or you can speak life. Your words produce free fruit. And then when your words produce fruit, this is what we are required to do is to eat that fruit. The Bible teaches us that we will eat the fruit of our words, whether our words are good or bad. What are you eating? What kind of fruit are you eating? You will eat the fruit of your words. So if you are always speaking negatively, mm -hmm, if you are always um, um, speaking down or intimidating or causing chaos, what are you going to eat? You're going to eat negativity. What kind of fruit does your word produce? Because get this, the, the, the Bible says, the latter part of verse 21, and those who love it. Uh-huh. What you're going to produce death and life and power, and those who love it will eat is fruit. Many times, what we're going through is simply we're eating the fruit of our words. Mm -hmm. We're eating the fruit of our words. Now, let me do, translate it that little bit. When we talk too much, we sin. When we talk too much, we sin. The Bible says, in the multitude of words, there is no lack of sin. If you're around someone that just talk, 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 that in the multitude of words, there is no sin. Most sin, actually all sin, begin with words. Let me say this. Sin begins with words. Say, well, Pastor, back that up. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 18. And I pray that you are writing these scriptures down. Matthew 15 and 18. It reads, but those things which proceed out of the mouth hmm, come from the heart. And they do what? They defile the man. And if they defile the man, sin is born. Mm -hmm. So the sin starts with the words. Let me read Matthew 15 and 18 again. But those, but those which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. Now, what things proceed out of the mouth? What things come out of the mouth? Words come out of the mouth. Words are the thing that defile a man. man. The words are what defile a man. Does it matter what we say? Yes, it matters what we say. So I know sometimes we have this thing. We let stuff frivolously come out of our mouth that are hurtful, that are harmful. And then we say, well, I didn't mean any harm. You created a defiling situation. You created death. Mm -hmm. So your words can either speak life or your words can speak death. Our tongues can build others up or they can tear them down. Now, let me read this quote to you that I ran across. It says that, that great minds discuss ideas. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds, average minds discuss events. Mm-hmm. Let me let me get this, get this. I need you all to understand this. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. Great minds discuss ideas. I've got an idea. God is giving me a revelation. He's giving me a dream. He's giving me a vision. This is an idea, something I can do for the Lord. Great minds discuss. That's what you talk about. Discuss ideas. Average minds, just the average Joe, discuss events. What happened? Mm -hmm. But in what? Small minds, small minds, little minds discuss people. Mm -hmm. Little minds, small minds discuss people. 
James in his letter to the church, the apostle James in his letter to the church talks about bridling the tongue. James 1 and 26, and write that scripture down, James 1 and 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. That's what the word of God says. My God, if any man among you seems to be religious, so spiritual, so religious, and probably not his tongue runs off at the mouth all the time, what is he doing? He's deceiving his own heart and his religion is in vain. That's what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. And then when we look at James 3 and 2, St. James 3 and 2, it says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Able to bridle the whole body. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and also able to bridle, thank you, ma'am, the whole body. So the power of the tongue. And when we look at James 3 and 3, it says, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us and return about their whole body. And then that fourth verse says, behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of first winds, Yet they are turned about with a smir very small ham, whithersoever the governor listed. So you put a bit in the horse's mouth and you turn it. That's the way you get to turn that horse around. What are you doing? You're controlling that horse by the bit in his mouth. People of God, we have got to control ourselves by putting the bit of the Holy Ghost in our mouths so that we won't fly off the handle and any and everything. Situations and people won't control us. Mm. There are two points that you can see immediately from these scriptures. The first is to speak with maturity and control. From those scriptures I gave you in James, to speak with maturity and control. Then we are able to bridle the whole body, our whole life, when we speak with maturity and control. A mature person is one who is grown up in Christ and has brought his tongue under control. Mm, that's when you grow up in Christ. When you're a baby, you don't give a baby a steak to eat. But eventually that baby grows up and it gets some teeth and is able to chew a steak. It's able to chew that chicken bone. Come on now. When we grow up in Christ, when we will mature in Christ, we're able to bring our tongue under control. It ought not be named among us. We've been in church 35 years, my God, and we yet can't control what's coming out of our mouths. Mm-hmm the tongue. We have got to learn how to control the tongue. The second point of those scripture is, this is what I want to talk about. Our words determine the direction of our life. Our words determine the direction of our life. Our tongue is like the bit in the horse's mouth and like the rudder that steers the ship. Just like the captain of the ship changes the direction by turning the rudder, in the same way, we must change the direction of our words to change the direction of our lives. If you want your life to change, you got to change the direction of your words. Mm -hmm. We talk about we want change, but we keep 
saying the same words out of our mouth. We keep letting the same negativity come out of our mouth. So our words determine our direction. Our life follows our words. So what does this say to us? We need to guard our lips from saying wrong things. Well, Pastor, you know, everybody slip up. Yes, but do you slip up 50, 11 times a day? Mm-hmm. Come on. You know, we like to have a crutch. Uh-huh. We like to have a crutch. But I have an advocate with the Father. Yes, you have an advocate with the Father, and you can go to him. But at some point, you got to grow up. What if a baby is born today and 20 years later, it still look like a newborn baby? What would you say something is wrong? Would you not? You would be going to all kinds of physicians. Sister Rhonda, if DJ was still the same size he was when he was born, you would be going to all kinds of specialists trying to find out what's wrong. Something is wrong. A baby isn't growing. Mm -hmm. If he's 10 years old and he doesn't say a word, you're going to seek some help. Why? Because something is wrong. People of God, something is wrong when everything keeps coming out of our mouths and we never grow up. We never start speaking the things of God. We never start rebuking those thoughts and those words before it get out of our mouth. And then it calls a wildfire. Because once words go out, I need y'all to get this. Once words go out the mouth, you cannot take it back. Let me let that rest on you. Once the words go out, you cannot take it back. You may ask for forgiveness, but you know what? You can't take those words back. It has done its job. It has caused the wound. That's why husband and wives, families, children, grandmas, aunties, and uncles, and everybody, when you are angry, shut your mouth. Hmm. When you're angry, shut your mouth. Why? Because something is going to come out that's going to cause a deep wound and a division in that relationship. You can say that I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And that's why many times we apologize. But then when you're getting angry again, you bring up all that stuff. You pull that scab right on off that wound. So we got to grow up in God. We've got to mature in God. We've got, got to speak the things of God. Uh, I'm going to get to my scripture about slow to speak after a while. Uh, so our life follows our words. It says we need to guard our lips from saying the wrong things. And we need to put right words in our mouth at all times times. Now, when we look at James chapter 3, verses 10 through 13, and I'm not going to read those um, scriptures again. You read them at your leisure. James is writing to the church. Why was he writing to the church? Why was he saying this? Because the church was full of small-minded people who gossip about each other and tore one another apart with their tongues. Mm. Let me say that again. But pastor, you calling me small minded. Let me tell you this. If the shoe fit, wear it. Mm -hmm. I love you. But if the shoe fit, wear it. Because sometimes I have to tell myself, girl, you need to hush. Mm -hmm. So the James is writing to the church in James chapter 3. Because it was full of small-minded people who gossip about each other and tore each other apart with their tongues. Now, people of God, people of God, we quickly avoid the sins of murder. Mm -hmm. We avoid the sin of stealing, drunkenness. But you know what we do? We often assassinate our fellow sisters and brothers and leave a trail of destruction by the way we use our tongues. Now, we're not going to kill you physically, but we will kill you with 
our tongues. We assassinate you with our tongues. Husbands have stabbed, stabbed their wives with words that are as sharp as daggers. And then the wives have launched out, lashed out with their tongues that slice and dice. Parents have devastated their children by repeated blasts of evil venom. Look at you. You'll never be nothing. Always getting into trouble. And children have exploded with their parents with anger, disrespect, and evil words. Destruction coming out of your mouth. But when we look at James' letter to the church, James 1 and 19 says, you must understand this, my beloved. James 1 and 19, everybody write that scripture down. James 1 and 19, you must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to what? Listen. Let everyone be quick to listen. Get this, two, three things now. Quick to listen, slow to speak. Let that sink in. Some of us got an answer for everything before. Ooh, come on now. Just, there we go. Slow to speak and slow to anger. Three things. It's what James told the church. You must understand this. Let everyone, this is what he's telling the saints. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Then I like that 26th verse of 1 James. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts. Their religion is worthless, in vain. Mm -hmm. That's when we can call, use that scripture, um, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. James connects. Here in the, in the book of James, James is connecting the sins of the tongue with the sins of the body because our words lead to corresponding deeds. Mm. He connects the tongue with the sins of the body because our words lead to corresponding deeds. Let's look at Proverbs 21 and 23. 21 and 23 says, he who guards his mouth and keeps his tongue from calamity. You better put a guard on your mouth. Mm -hmm. He who guards his mouth keeps his he keeps his tongue from calamity. The tongue can repress, offend, befriend, affirm, alienate, build up belittle, comfort, criticize, delight, or destroy. There are many options for the tongue. And you know, we, you, I mean, both of us have gone to school or grew up in this world. We've heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. That is a lie from the pit of hell. We all know that isn't true. Sticks and stones may make break my bones, but words will never hurt me. The, the truth is psychological pain is more severe than lasting physical pain. Psychological pain. Because why? Many people, many of us harbor scars from our psychological abuse as children. We don't like to talk about that. Mm -hmm. The psychological abuse that we receive as a child. And those scars are on our hearts now and they yet influences our lives. So there's many times when we have been hurt so when we were children and we've gotten to this point now, I ain't gonna let nobody hurt me. I'm gonna strike out at you before you hurt me. I'm gonna hurt you before you hurt me. What is, what are you doing? You're reacting to the psychological scars that took place in your childhood. And that's why I tell parents, you have to watch your tone and what's coming out your mouth at your children. Yes, you correct them, yes. That's right to do, but you don't put a deadly scar on their heart saying things negative that they would never ever get over. And I'm sure if all of us had a time that we could talk to our parents and say, you know, mom, you know, dad, 
when I was eight years old, you said this to me and it hurt me so bad. You're still harboring it in your heart. Mm -hmm. I know we like the facade that we had the perfect childhood. Everything was wonderful and all of this kind of stuff. But we all ran into some roadblocks when we were growing up as children. Why? Because of the tongue. Words break our hearts. It breaks our spirit. Broken bones can heal in time, but a broken spirit caused by words creates death and is not easily, not easily repaired. My question to you tonight, Agape, how many people have you maimed or killed with your words? Is your tongue too quick to criticize? Do your words build up people or do they tear down? There is power in the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. There is power in that tongue. Will you speak life or will you assassinate your brother? Will you assassinate your sister with your words? And many times we're speaking, it's not in a bad tone, but our words have been coated with sugar, but it's been targeted for the heart. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. What's coming out of your mouth? Get control of that mouth. Get control of it. Ask the Holy Ghost, I need you to put a bit in my mouth. So when I would speak immediately, you do take just like that horse's bit, you'll pull back on me a Holy Ghost that I claim to say. When I would say something, the Holy Ghost said, uh-uh, not so. Mm -mm, I can't say anything. All I can do is just pray and call on the name. Let me tell you something, people of God, you don't have to respond to everything. I know we like to respond to everything because you ain't going to tell me this. I'm, I'm grown. Mm-mm. Some things you don't respond to, you let the Lord fix it. But realize there is power in your tongue. God bless you. Love you. Thank God for this, this message. And we're going to continue to talk on that because we must grow up in the Lord. We must grow. How can we produce babies if we're yet a baby? A baby can't produce a baby. Mm-mm. We got to grow up in God so that we can birth some babies into the kingdom of God so that we can give God his glory. Because let me tell you, the, the scripture I read, sweet and bitter shouldn't be coming out the same mouth. Cursing should not be coming out the same mouth that you're going to praise God with. That's the word of God. We gave you the scripture. Ooh, come on now. But there's power in your tongue. God bless you. That is all I have for you tonight. My God, my God, my God. But we, we're going to get control of our tongues because I, I, I want to bring this message and, and I, I, the, the Lord just gave me the title for the other day. The high cost of living low. There is a high cost of low living. One of the costs of low living is that we're killing people with our tongues. We're assassinating the saints of God. We're assassinating our youth. We're assassinating each other. We're causing bodily arm with each other. No, I'm not shooting you with a gun, but I'm killing you with my mouth. If you can't say anything nice, if you can't say anything kind, if you can't be kind, be quiet. Well, no, I, I, I need to say what I got to say. Tell it to Jesus. Say what you got to say and tell it to the Lord. Mm, my God, my God. Because when you finish talking to him and when you finish crying with him, you ain't got nothing else to say to anybody else. When you walk away there, you say it's in the Lord's hand. Uh-huh. Praise God. But there is power in the tongue. God bless you.